Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel and today I am around Metro Station Papineau in Montreal. And here I am going to a new cafe called Troisième Tasse or Third Cup. And it's a bright sunny day. We're having a really warm autumn here in Montreal. And I think this cafe opened about two or three years ago. They have a lot of nice pastry items. And I ordered an almond croissant with a cup of latte. As always, before I start consuming them, I did a quick sketch in about 10 to 15 minutes. So the sun is shining all over me. I'm sitting right by the window and it's so hot. So I moved to another table in the middle of the cafe and I'm ready to sketch the view outside. This window is just perfect without any extra frames or barriers in front of it covering this nice view. And there's a really dramatic contrast of this corner building right outside. Just the perfect timing to be sitting here and looking at this scenery. So I'm beginning with the uh, rooftop area. The front side of the building that's facing me, the rooftop area. So when drawing buildings, I always like to start with the contour of the rooftop first. So it's a slanting rectangle, almost a trapezoid. And now I'm drawing the right side. And the line is going down towards the right because these two lines are actually way above my eye level. And then I'm just gradually connecting the left side of this corner building with the rooftop lines of the other buildings surrounding it on the left. And this is the side of another building, which is like a prism. So when we're on the ground level and looking at the street scenery in front of us, we can always see just one, maximum two sides of a building. And all buildings are in the shape of cubes or prisms. Before adding any further details for those buildings, I am drawing this person waiting for the light to change. So she's like standing there on the corner of the curb and yeah, she was there still for like 30 seconds. So I had enough time to draw her before she walked away. And adding people is a really great way to show the proportion of the buildings. It looks like the buildings are looking way taller with a smaller subject matter to compare with. For example, people, cars. And now I am drawing this lamp post on the left side and adding these vertical lines to show the texture of the exterior wall of that building. Adding some more vertical lines. Drawing another person on the other side of the street to show a sense of depth. So I already have one person in the foreground right outside the window and I need some other people to create more sense of narrative. So this person is not the only person in this scenery. I want more. So this is actually a pretty busy area close to downtown. Now I'm adding these essential vertical lines and on the bottom of these vertical lines I am adding more people. Here comes another man standing on the, on the corner of the sidewalk waiting for the light to change. So these are great opportunities for us to sketch people because they're there for us for 30 seconds. So 30 seconds is actually a lot to capture um, someone's basic gesture. Especially the back view is pretty easy. You don't have to draw a face. I love sketching on location because I am able to capture the movement of the city, especially these people. So these people are not walking through the space on a fixed moment at the same time. These people are captured um, across, let's say, five or ten minutes or sometimes longer. So it's a very interesting fact about sketching on location that you're actually capturing multiple moments of the same scenery. And I'm truly observing 
the、um, phenomenon in front of me. If I just take a photo, I'm not really seeing. I'm only trying to capture、uh, something with the help of、uh, technology. So this is the true human living experience to be really slowing down and try to see these essential details. Not all of the details, okay? Only the essential details, and capture them with these lines and then later watercolors. So I think the most challenging fact between the beginner artist and the advanced artist is that、uh, it's about finding the essence of a scenery, and not spending too much time and energy working on details that are not so important. So as you can see, I'm just focusing on these details such as windows that really defines the、uh, character of these buildings. And just filling in the large chunks of building shapes with these medium and small details in abstract shapes, such as squares and the tiny bar of rectangle for the windowsill underneath, and then the、uh, display window on the street level. Hatching in with black ink to show the shade, the sense of depth for these buildings. And keep moving on toward the right. Drawing more repeating rectangles that defines windows, and shading in these glass areas with black ink, because a lot of windows during daytime they look like pretty much like solid black, and we can't see what's inside. And drawing the shapes that I see underneath. This is like a lamp post, and also hold the traffic signals and street signs. So other than drawing with lines, I'm also filling in some of the big and small shapes with solid black ink or hatching lines very quickly to give a sense of contrast. I know when we're looking at the street scenery, there always contains like a huge entanglement of different objects overlapping on top of one another. I'm really chill when I'm sketching because I don't give myself a really high expectation of including every single detail that's out there. I'm actually being very gentle to myself, just do all my best to draw all of the things that I see that captures my attention, but not everything that's out there. It's too much pressure. Here I'm drawing another person walking across the street very quickly.、Um, I don't really need to draw. His legs because it's behind the cross on, so that's kind of like a cheating as an artist. It's fun to put the cross on and my cup of coffee in the foreground area, overlapping on top of the view outside the window. It's a really nice、um, construction of a narrative of my afternoon sitting in the cafe and looking at this gorgeous view outside. And now I'm starting to add these bars. And this one is going down towards the right because the change of angles. This is the other side of this building, which is very much like a cube shape. Before finishing this stripe, I'm adding the traffic signal and other street signs on this、uh, on this pole, overlapping on the right side of this building. And after that, I'm ready to finish the stripe behind the pole. And this is the overall structure of this corner building, which is very much a cube. It's like a prism, a large prism on top of a smaller prism, roughly. As you can see, it's pretty clear now. And the rest of the details are going to be really easy because these shapes are very small and it's just easier to to、uh, to fill in. Drawing these little、uh, triangular arcs for the attic windows. Again, just a bunch of repeating lines and shapes, and these rectangles. Now these look like little birdhouses, and just filling in these little shapes with the tiny window panels. Again, I'm moving pretty fast because these are very much like repeating lines. 
This is like a pattern of birdhouses. Adding a bit of accentuation around the frames so they look a bit stronger. Making this line a little stronger to accentuate the structure of the rooftop frame. And drawing these lines that gives detail for the rooftop. I think these are probably like wooden planks. And also giving a little accentuation for the bar in the middle by using a denser black line. And yeah, these lines are going down towards the right on this side of the roof. So we are drawing like a three-dimensional building that you can see two sides. You have to be aware of the change of angle. Now I'm ready to move on to the top floor of this building. But before that, I'm just adding that stripe underneath the roof, which is the eave area and these little tabs. Very common on classical buildings. So as you can see, we we'll just deal with the overall structure of this whole building first, which is a cube shape. And then these minor details, we're just kind of connecting one part after another from up part to middle part and then the lower part. Now I'm drawing these window frames and bars, window sills on the, I think this is probably the third floor. Always adding accentuation for some of the lines to create a sense of dimension. These windows are actually very thin pieces of prisms carved out from the surface of the building. And just adding this division line or bar between the third floor and the second floor, like a belt. And keep adding another row of four windows. So these windows are very much like aligning vertically with the ones above. So this part of the drawing is almost to the end. So it's just getting easier and easier. It's just the beginning that you have to push through. Once you get to this point, everything is going to get easier and easier. Just so keep drawing and adding accentuations to make sure some of the large shapes stand out really well. Now, moving on to the first floor, the display windows containing a bunch of uh, large and small rectangles. And when you're drawing buildings, don't worry about making perfectly straight lines. So as you can see here, none of my lines are perfectly straight, like mechanical. We are humans and the lines we make is very much like handwriting that contains um, active human spirit that cannot be done with cameras or like digital drawing. And then when you're doing digital drawing, you could make you know, a perfect gradients of colors or like perfect straight lines. Uh, but, you know, in, in my personal view, a lot of, you know, digital uh, drawing techniques, they may not be as lively as human-made lines on paper. And now working on the right-hand side of the building. Now these windows are kind of slanting down towards the right because of the angle. And adding accentuation around the side of the window frame in upside-down L shapes. So the light comes from the left side, so the, uh, the shaded area around the window frame is on the uh, uh, right-hand side, mostly. And keep filling in the right side of the building with more window frames, little details. This part is very satisfying because I know where everything should be in relationship to the other lines and shapes and placement of other things around it and drawing the bottom, the, the ground level of this building on the right. A lot of bars, display window frames, posters, and this is actually a little mural with letters. Keep adding some more frames. This is almost the end of the sketch. And just kind of keep observing and see if there's any other teeny tiny thingies to be added around the curb over here 
And these are the barriers. Actually, these are actually very colorful barriers. I don't know for what purpose. Um, yeah, and some more details around the rooftop area. There's another building in the distance. Let's just keep the lines very light and blurry. Some final lines to have like a solid base structure for the buildings. That's it. Here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about um, 22 minutes or so to draw. So the uh, drawing process that you just watched is two times faster than real life speed. Now it's time to move on to the watercolors. I can't wait to get this done. I'm starting with the sky, but wetting the sky area with clear water so the blue can spread out nice and smooth and in a translucent way. Grabbing a little cerulean blue and cobalt blue and a bit of green. I could feel a bit of turquoise in the middle of the sky. The sky is never just a singular kind of blue. It's never just cerulean blue or ultramarine blue only, especially on a sunny day. There, just spread it out and leaving little traces of brush marks to show the turbulence of air. And again, this painting process is two times faster than the real-time painting speed. Now I'm just wetting the street area with clear water and grabbing some leftover lemon yellow mixed with the uh, cadmium yellow. The first layer for the street to show the, uh, the sunshine reflecting onto the concrete street. Again, street is not just gray, especially on a sunny day. It's a really warm yellow being reflected on the surface. And same for the exterior areas of these buildings. A warm yellow glow catching the beautiful warmth of the sun. Now I'm just wetting the rooftop area with clear water. And grabbing some more leftover yellows and put it very lightly. It's not a super uh, strong yellow or solid yellow. This just contains mostly water. I wanted to show the luminosity, not a solid color. And grabbing some burnt sienna, mixing a little bit of orange into the burnt sienna. So it's a really warm brown for the left side of this building, which is exposed to the sun. It should be a brighter brown. And now for the right side, I want it to be like the same color for now. I'm going to add the shade tone later. The right side is actually in shade. I'm just going to put on the shade color later. Now it just looks all the same from, from the left to the right. Don't, there's no need to rush. First layer is always simple. There should be a sense of unity with similar colors. I keep using the same brown for the other areas of the cityscape that I see. Grabbing some cobalt blue and a little bit of royal purple to get this deep bluish gray for this building and just want like a deep green color for this building and some more unsaturated brown for this building on the far left and just keep punching on this uh, gray here and there around the bottom of that building and diluted yellows and browns for the belt and the display windows, nice and light. So in this beginning stage of painting, I don't put too many deep tones yet. I just keep adding the, the vibrant colors or um, the super intensive colors that stand out. For example, like that a dark gray building in the middle. And just grabbing some bluish grays to paint the shadow on the street. So if you want to show the brightness of sunshine or uh, any lighting condition, you have to paint the shadows to get the contrast in. And sometimes the shadows could look a little weird, but well, it's, it should be there. And now I'm just grabbing this leftover bluish gray to paint most of these windows. During daytime, uh, most of the windows had a really intensive gray color. And same for the attic windows as well. 
As you can see, I'm using a lot of leftover colors. That's why I never clean my palette. There's no need to. It saves a lot of time just to grab the colors left over in the mixing area. Especially for these tiny little shapes and also the grays. A lot of times I don't have to mix the grays from scratch. Now, so adding this gray on the right side of the uh, rooftop area. There we go. The contrast is here. Yeah, so now the rooftop area looks more three-dimensional. Now I'm grabbing some burnt sienna and mixing a bit of purple, blue, into the burnt sienna. And now this layer of wash also contains less water, so it's a really solid brown for the right side of this building. And here comes the contrast. So again, as I mentioned before, if you want to show um, like a strong sunshine or lighting condition, you have to get the contrast in. You have to be brave painting the shaded areas of a building or other objects and also the shadows. Just make sure you're very clear about the contrast and just get it in. Adding the shadow underneath the windowsills, grabbing some more gray, these tiny little brush strokes here and there around the windows and the, uh, the attic pop-up shapes. A little more intensive gray for the right side of the building in the distance. It's also a prism shape, some more intensive browns and thin brush strokes. Same for this side, brownish gray. Painting the letters of the mural and the rest of the, uh, the mural area is kind of like a black color. So I very rarely use black, even though I'm trying to paint something, you know, that's like a black board or like a black surface. I, I use blues and purples instead. So now these display windows on the uh, ground level is somewhat still flat. So now I'm adding some more intense tones containing less water. Um, the bluish grays and the um, intense browns are left over in my palette. And also not overpaint. I'm also leaving some areas with the bright muted yellow to show the uh, atmosphere of the day. Another important thing about painting watercolors is to just paint it to the right amount of intensity and stop at the right time. Some more browns. And also as you move on, after the first layer, you have to make your paint um, a bit more bold, containing less water and more paint pigment. So your forms look stronger just getting these leftover grays to paint these traffic signs, the poles. A little more contrast for this belt on the right. Some more grays for the uh, display windows. Let's paint these barriers. Each of these barriers is like a color from the rainbow. Very interesting. and grabbing some vibrant orange to paint the stripes on the construction cones. So as you can see, I have the colors for the barriers and the construction cones um, to attract the viewer's attention. So these little bits of colors are actually really fun to have in a sketch. I'm using leftover grays to paint these people's outfits. So most people these days, they like to wear grays probably like in every 50 people, there's like a red jacket. So it's very rare to see a really vibrant outfit. And adding some more grays on the right side of the building here. And painting the hair and skin color of these people with leftover browns. Another quick layer to give a contrast. And also being aware that the sun, the sunshine comes from the left side. So the left shoulder of the man near the croissant is really bright. 
Every little detail matters. Another layer to give contrast for these people's torsos. And the final bit of brown there. Final polish. That's it. Here is a look of my finished sketch. So the painting took me another 20 minutes to finish. So in total, the line and watercolors, uh, this whole sketch took me 45 minutes to draw and paint on location. It was a really enjoyable place to sit on a bright sunny day. So I think there's no need to spend more than like 90 minutes or two hours or three hours to do a sketch. I think that's too much time. I like to keep it quick, spontaneous, and just capture the essence. So thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update this my channel two to three times a week. I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day, everyone.